somehow we are all wearing the same color, and we didn't really plan that. I was wearing a flannel, and I had to take it off because it was going through my blue screen. But yeah, I had a bright orange, and it didn't go well with all the orange behind me. So. I saw that. I thought I was tripping, but I knew you were. Cha- I knew you had changed your shirt for real. Yeah, I was. I looked a little too fat. I was like, nah. I get it. <laughs> it's like that. Halloween's over with. Hey. God damn it! Shut up, great pumpkin. I'm like the giant peach from that one movie. <laughs> oh yeah, fucking uh, backdoor sluts nine. Yeah, I seen that. Whoa, Motel Six. <laughs> this and that. No, just kidding. So, how was everyone's day? <sighs> I think I'm getting sick again. I can kind of tell. I what? think it's just sinuses because I feel fine. Allegra, man, it makes me feel a lot better. That shit don't ever work for me. Damn, well, you used it too much. Huh? You used it too much so. in your 20s. And, yeah. <laughs> and my 30s. Now your 30s, like, now nah, we used to the stronger. Yeah. Oof. Yikes. Blue chew. Something man. stronger. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Somebody gave me one of those, like, before at the, at the gym, yeah, I'm talking about this shit will make you less sore, like it'll open your veins up, you'll yeah, get a good pump. It's be like, vascular yeah, as fuck. I was vascular all down the shaft. <laughs> hey, Chad Ocho Cinco used to use shit like that before every single game because he said it gave he him was crazy. Fucking weird. I know, fucking huh? weird. I know he was weird. He was very weird. I'm pretty positive that they based the character Thad on Blue Mountain State off of Chad Ocho Cinco. Okay, I, I looked out. I got just about every Houston Chronicle front page from the World Series. <clears throat> oh, <throat> fuck, I broke one already. Dog, what? Damn. Well, no, I didn't break it. It's good. A that's a dope-ass picture of your arm, bro. Oh, that's... Nice. Finally, Cron.com does something nice. Hey. All right, well... We're getting started with the Houston Astros, I guess. The fools, the fools are making moves. They uh, eh. a break is gonna give you exactly what we wanted you to give us, but with a bat, probably. Yeah. How do you? So we signed him to a three-year deal, twenty million per year. Oh, it's a lot of money. That yeah. is a lot of money. He's in his late thirties. I think he's. I want to say he's like thirty-seven. I believe. Yeah, so he's 36. 36, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, he won MVP the bubble season. Yeah. 2020. But it's, hit, it's weird if you look at his stats. His home runs fell in half from this year to last year. But his doubles doubled. So, I'll take it. Yeah. Interesting. It, he's one of those players that, I mean, we've talked about it a few times on our shows where I don't need you to hit the homers out of Minute Maid at, I need production, singles, doubles, triples. I mean, and that's what Yuli would give us. So I'm not – you look at the team, okay, we won. Now what are we doing after that? You can see – I mean, the Mariners are keep making moves, so you are not staying pat. We still have no manager, so Jim Crane's just throwing his money out there. Like, it's his money. Yeah, I mean, I just want to. I just think mm-hmm. that if you gave him twenty million, what did Josh Bell want? Yikes! Because if it's only twenty five, then I pay the extra five for a switch hitter. Yeah. That there's a yeah. There's talks that Aaron Judge could be coming here too. That would be a dick. We talked about that last time. I don't know. I mean, if you're going to give Verlander forty million, and I just don't want to sign that dude. To, He's not coming for three years. Yeah. He's coming for seven to ten. And mm-hmm. He's already like 31. Yeah. I'm not down with that. And he's adopted. I don't care. <laughs> Everybody needs a home. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. It's the amount he wants. I mean, one, you have to pull him away from New York, the lifestyle over there. If he enjoys it, hey, cool. I don't um, think he cares about it. <clears throat> it sounds like he doesn't. Like, he he said he wants a winning franchise. Um, with the Abreu signing, it kind of makes it sound like the players themselves don't care, like, about what happened in 2017. Like, they're like – players want to win. 
let's like mm-hmm. be honest, players want to win. They want that ring. And a lot of people are mad that the Astros, the rich got richer, I guess is what they're saying. Yeah. But you can't with the Abreu. Really, with Abreu and then the free agents they're going after, like, um, you know, they're in the – well, I mean, I don't know why they even consider. What the fuck are you going to do with him? I think he's just a name floating that, and people. There's a lot more news people that were talking about Cody Bellinger than I think they should have. Like, yeah, it was yeah, that, terrible year. <clears throat> that was that was a lot of speculation more than anything. I think he's going to go to a team that is in a state <clears throat> that don't have marijuana because. I know a dope head when I see one, and <laughs> in LA, him won. So, I mean, you probably shouldn't come here if drugs are a problem for you. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. You got good tacos though, Cody. Would, yeah. Let's say we'll start with, I guess, Judge first because Caleb brought it up. Would y'all be? So y'all wouldn't want Judge for the seven to ten years. But no. I'll be cool with giving him like three years, fifty million a year though. That's what I was going to say. Like, three years sounds like a good... For, we talked about it, Nick. Like, you, like, it would be the best hitting outfield i ever seen in my life. Yeah. And it would be so funny because it's like, y'all already hate us, and then we get judged. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be the most hated dude in Yankees history. Yeah. That would, yeah. It would be funny. If we sign Aaron Judge, the first <laughs> video we need to do is just give him a bat, right? And somebody lob a trash can up at him, and he bashes the Ooh. shit out of it. He's like, I'm an Astro now. <laughs> That would be funny. Like, that reminds me of like a Kevin Durant deal, kind of like, hey, we're going to use it's you for exactly like, what it yeah, is. two, three years, and then you can go on and do your own thing, get more money if you want, bro. It's all good. If you signed Aaron Judge to three years, I would guarantee two World Series. Straight up. Yeah, that actually. That, yeah, that sounds like it could pan out like that. I'm trying to. It's what worth about, it to me. I mean, the way I like, we always talk about it in sports. Would you rather take multiple championships and then suck for a bit and then redo it again? Because it's going to happen. You're not going to, it's hard to stay at the top. Look at the Yankees, look at the Cowboys, look at Lakers. One bad mistake in your man from management, it's just, you hurt him. For me, it works out because if you could sign him to three years, right? By the time he leaves, <clears throat> in like, let's say 2026. Jordan's only 20. He's only 30. Tucker will be like 30. Framber will be like 30. So we'll still be good. Yeah. Now, be 30. what about Cody Bellinger? How do y'all feel? If, I mean, he's kind of public enemy number one for always opening the damn we mouth. Him. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know that we need him. I think it would be hilarious if he signed. Just because he talked all that shit and stuff like that, and then he's just like, "Hey, here I am." I don't even trip on the Dodgers though, because I don't feel like they talk shit about us that much. I was gonna say I don't trip on the Dodgers; I trip on their fans. Their fans are the ones that talk shit. I don't hear nothing about us in their mouth. Any Dodgers fan I've ever met is <clears throat> still salty. Yeah, if you any like if you go to any MLB group and you yeah. look up, the first person talking shit is a Dodger fan. Well, anytime right. we post anything that has to do with Altuve, somebody will comment on there and say he's the biggest cheater in the world. He should get killed. Like Altuve lives How dare they? free in their in their heads. Like that's why Cody Bellinger is gonna team stay team. over there because he wants stuff like that. Uh, yeah, maybe. No, <laughs> Bellinger would probably go to somewhere like the Cubs. I was gonna say he's gonna go to a team you wouldn't expect, probably. No, Imagine that's though- because the Cubs are due for signing somebody. Imagine though, like imagine he went to like the Rockies or some shit. Nah, they don't do any. They don't ever draft like sign people. There's certain teams need. that don't do shit. He Milwaukee, might want rocks, so he Rockies. Could they just like are there. I feel like they're just fillers for the league or something. Sometimes. Imagine though, like okay, JV Justin Verlander visited the Dodgers today, so yeah. internet broke wild. Like, oh my god, she signed the Dodgers. <sighs> imagine if you signed Bellinger and they signed Verlander and just. The internet would just. Well, like, you would oh. lose that. They would talk <laughs> shit. You would. Lo- That's not equal. I mean, there's people that clearly don't watch the Astros because 
all I kept seeing was, oh, when y'all lose Verlander, y'all have no more pitching. And I'm like, yeah, that's those are those people that don't know shit about anything. They just know that Verlander's a big name. Yeah, I was like, uh, we got six man. starters right now. Yeah. I what mean, did you say? Know. What did you say earlier? You were like, they could just have McCullers. They don't even have to give me. Anything. Yeah, they like, could just have him. <laughs> give him to somebody. Like, then I will get Ver- Verlander back for sure. Whatever he asked for. Yeah. Because that's the thing is you just don't want to spend money for something you don't need. Yeah. There was a, a post. Um, I, I told Kayla about it. Uh, Johnny Cueto posted on his Twitter probably about an hour ago. He put a picture of him with Dusty Baker back in Cincinnati. Oh. And he put new profile pic and then just left it alone. And so people are like, oh, is he going to join Dusty? Is he going back to Cincinnati? And it's like, do the Astros even need him? It's like one of those. But he's so old that we could probably get him for cheap, and I'll take him. I'll fucking take that, dude. That's what I was thinking. I mean, he's – I get going back to Cincinnati. I get get pulling a Granky and going back to where you started type thing and where you're loved, but – Well, I'll dang. say the reason I want to bring him in is because I could tell you something for, for a fact. One of the relievers in the Astros' bullpen – Naris, Montero, Abreu, one of those guys are gonna have a terrible season. Hopefully, somebody shits not- like, yeah, somebody's gonna fucking suck. Hopefully, it's not rough, man. Yeah, so I know that's what I said. Hopefully, it's not Hopefully terrible. Hopefully, he doesn't pull Lance, get the money, and suck. Eh? Jesus. So, you have to bring other people in, you know. I mean, he's 36, he's from the Dominican Republic, he fits the nucleus of what our pitching staff is like. It's it's not frowned upon, like you said, uh, hey, I need you to come in and, you know. I mean, he's worked with Dusty. He's one of Dusty's guys. He likes working with him. Um, Plus, he wouldn't have to work as much. Yeah. It's like if somebody gets hurt or somebody goes down, Lance, usually all the time. I mean, somebody struggles, like you said. Hey, I need you to fit in right here. That already probably arguably the best bullpen in MLB still, even with or without Verlander. Yep, and if you add that, that's just nasty. Like, because we still have Stanek. <laughs> you got uh, dumb shit that broke his hand. Mouton. You got <laughs> Seth Martinez. You got uh, uh, Bielek. You got a bunch of people. You got your boy Hunter Brown. He's a starter. That that's why I'm saying like we could potentially be doing Carlos Correa all over again. Yeah. Like, hey, we're willing to see what Hunter Brown has, and let Verlander go. I mean, he's basically Verlander, just younger and not. A I just season. feel like Dusty lost faith in Verlander a little bit. I think he did, based off of his performance in the World Series at first. Well, yeah, but obviously because he was available for Game Four and he didn't pitch him. I know, like he was fully rested at four and he didn't do it. And I was like, I was wondering, I was like, that's weird, but whatever. Yeah, you can kind of like see it. Like it was more of the I'm gonna. Say, like have respect for you because who you are Justin Verlander. Yeah. But you kind of got like after he got his first win in the World Series, it was like, all right, the next guys are up. Like these are the guys I'm going with cuz even when they asked him it wasn't like, "Hey, was do you think you're going to put Verlander out for at least one inning?" It never came to that. He was like, "I got Garcia, I got Arkiti, I got" and he had already kind of gotten his head and and Dusty's one of those people where like you can kind of figure out where he's leaning at on the table of who he likes, who he doesn't like, who he's trusting, who he's not trusting. Like, Considering that we didn't lose a game until the game one of the World Series, was he the worst starter in the playoffs? I think he was. Yeah. And all the whole playoffs, he was the worst because Seattle rocked him. Yeah. He got rocked in Seattle. He got rocked in – He did okay against the Yankees. Yeah, Yankees. But I, I think everybody thinks Lance because of the last game. But – I got to give Lance credit because he stayed in. I mean, he it was an ugly game. It was in the game yeah. I don't want to remember. But oh, you'll never forget yeah, that fucking I ain't gonna shit. Forget yeah. it. But but it's like that's what Dusty told him. Dusty said, "Just get me like the five innings so I can get to my bullpen." And he said, "Okay, Man, I got you." Fuck that, bro. You're waiting for a World Series. You don't let a pitcher give up five home runs. That's Dusty's fault. Yeah. First off, Lance should not have been pitching that game. You you have when you have Verlander. Fromber and Javier, that's a one, two, three. I don't give a fuck where we play at. That, so it's Dusty's fault. 
straight up. Yeah, I think, I guess looking at rotation wise going into next year, even if Verlander's there, are you going Framber Javier? No, I do. I do Verlander. He's always my first. Okay. Because like you have to be more cautious with him because he came off Tommy John. He's older. Like, I just think he was hurt or something going to the playoff because he mechanically was fucked up. And I I wonder if it was that calf. You think <sighs> it was you think I mean it could have been hurt. A lot of them, I mean, at the end of the year, you're playing 160 something games. Uh, you're gonna be in there hurt. I mean, th- the last game alone, we lost probably like three or four Astros. Luckily we won it. But I mean, it was a a grind of some games, 18 innings and then a lot of traveling, a lot of delays, a lot of this. And, I mean, it kind of pushes you back. Um, the, a lot of waiting, especially for him being wanting to go a lot. And then it was a new playoffs, like, scheme or whatever where they – Format. Had, yeah, the little format. So, it, I'm wondering if that played. But also, you look at, like, DeGrom and Scherzer. They did terrible yeah, they fucked in up. the playoffs. And they're almost about the all the same age group of, like, getting up there. So it's like I'm wondering if just the grind of it because we kind of shut Verlander down a bit at the end, let him go, and then all right, let him go. But they ramped them up, and it seems like when we started to ramp Verlander up for playoffs, it was a little too much. Like I think they that's exactly why it was that way. The difference is is Degrom is like six foot one, one hundred ninety pounds, and Verlander's like six five two forty five. So yeah. he's built to, you know, he's like, all right, fuck it. I just have to give you two more games. We'll do it. That's why DeGrom and Scherzer were terrible in the playoffs. Yeah, that was. <laughs> if Verlander was... pitched like that, then I would be like, do not bring him back. <laughs> it's like those Damn. two, uh, yeah, they. Because so I like, guess you look at all the games and, okay, look at game one. The, he gave up the five run lead, right? Mm-hmm. The first three innings were perfect. And the second time through the lineup, they fucked you up, bro. Like, bad. So you can't be entirely mad about it. You know what I mean? So I think that something happened. It's like, what happened? Were you hurt? Did your elbow or arm get tired? That's just like in Seattle. It's like he had to get his shit together, and then he pitched, like, four good innings. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So yeah. I guess it's safe to say you're okay with the Grom and Scherzer not coming back? No, I do not want them on my team at all. I want to see Hunter Brown pitch. I want to put Luis Garcia and Urquidy back in the lineup. I want, yeah, I want Christian Javier to be a full-time starter. Like, if that dude had the innings, he would, to qualify for any award, he would have been the Cy Young. Yeah. Solid. I mean, he has what, two uh, shutouts in a, in a one season. It's like, Against the Yankees. Up, yeah. The dude pitched six innings of a no hitter in the World Series. Yeah, that is the Yankees kryptonite. Like on our team, just oh Yankees playing. All right, Javier, you're up, bro. Come on, come here. Your time, bro. Hey. Garcia, you're after him. Rock the baby. Hey. Jeez, yeah. for real. I mean, uh, okay. Is there any free agents? I guess that y'all. Are, I guess they said they want to bring Yuli back as a utility player. I'm good with that. So. Uh, more than likely, I'm guessing he's going to come back. I mean, he loves his team and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Why not stay? I guess what does that move? Uh, let Ms. Diaz it out of it? Yeah, it kind of – well, not really. Do you trust Yuli to play third? <laughs> Hell no. Well, then you bring Diaz back. Unless you – you're are, are you okay with playing Henley at third? I kind of am because he's shortstop. Yeah, I could trust Henley at third. So if you're going to play Henley more, then you could get rid of Diaz. Damn. I'm cool with that. Diaz struggled way too much. Because you're still going to keep um, fucking the little boy. Uh, <laughs> Dubon. 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 Yeah, Dubon. Uh, the little boy. I was like, who's he talking about? He's a little boy. Like, you got Dubon, McCormick, and my – if you're going to go for a position, it has to be <clears throat> yeah, either a full-time catcher or – you're di- about to disrespect the whole team and go get a center fielder. <laughs> Unless you get another outfielder who could play left field and right field. And who would that be? I have no clue. I'd like to have Brantley back, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. I forgot about him all fucking broke his shoulder ass. And if they're going to go spend a shit ton of money, then I'm going to. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go offer Brandon Nemo something. Oh, he's Still a name that the he's a name that's been popping up for him for sure. I'm gonna tell you why he would be my number one on my number one free agent target list. He's gonna do something that we didn't have last year. He's a leadoff hitter. So I move everybody down one. Boom. Boop. Yep. No more pressure. I'll do it. Nope. I'll do maybe hitting home runs again. That'd be tight. That would be a nasty lineup, though. Because a Abreu's velocity is ridiculous last year. What he was hitting balls. It would be Nemo, Altuve, Pena at three. Uh your fucking cousin. Alvarez. And then Alvarez, Bregman. Tucker, Abreu. So you're seven deep. Yeah, go get Nemo. I mean, but McCormick earned the right. He did. But um, it seems like, and I man, I hate to say this, but everything I keep reading is that Crane is going like balls to the wall, like get me who I want if it fits and if the money works. I mean, he made so much money just from last year. I feel yeah, like all the all the Texans fans moved into an Astro fan base and just all oh, so the se- jerseys. Okay, mm-hmm. if we're gonna bring players in, that means we have to sacrifice something, right? Always. What if I told you you get Nemo, but you get you gotta cut Jake Myers or or McCormick? Who do you cut? Myers. <sighs> and it sucks because his defense is really stellar. That's but... why I think I would cut McCormick. I think I could trade McCormick for something more. But I don't, don't want to find out if McCormick's going to – he just caught that ball in Philly and he hit the cage, and I'll remember that forever. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, what I was going to say. Like, <laughs> he fucking I mean, he caught it, hit the cage, and bounced his off. His family rooted for him in their hometown. Like, I mean, yeah. it's, it's beautiful stuff like that. Like, I, I just feel that Myers is the odd man out from a lot of the, the click stuff that was coming out. I feel like, I mean, it sucks for him. He got hurt when he was probably rising to the peak of what he was going to start doing. But that's why I would keep him because I still think that if you need it, it was a close game or something, and you're like, I need somebody to float in the outfield. He, uh, <clears throat> I want Myers, like, because he's a for sure out defensive outfield out. Like, he yeah. could put him anywhere out there. He's going to do that job. So I think I would keep Myers over McCormick. Yeah. I mean, McCormick has more value if you're trading, but. If Myers, you're going to drop. Man, it's tough, though. I mean. But then also you have to decide. It's like, do you pay for a <clears throat> full-time catcher and let Maldonado be a backup? Or do you play Maldonado and bring somebody up? What do you think you do? If you were. Well, I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> From, I would, I would want to keep Maldonado at least another year and have a backup. Well, you uh, have him for at least two, I think, or one. Or no, two. I know, but I'm saying like I would want to keep him at least one, and then see if I could have him as like a backup to mentor or something. Man. Well, then you bring somebody like you have that Lee kid at yeah. Sugarland. You have Delion, and then there's another one. I might bring one of them fools up. Probably, bring up, I'd bring up Lee so we could have my cousin on there. Well, that's who they probably would bring up because he played last year. Yeah, I do think he's a little mm-hmm. bit lazy though. Like he, it's like get off your knee, bro. That's why the he, balls get by you. Yeah, I, I think like for sure the pitchers of their choice. It's just man, it's tough because your catcher really dictates a lot of stuff for your pitchers, painting that that whole area and Lee. Just like you said, he was on his knees a lot, and there was a lot of time. But what if they did go get Wilson Contreras, right? <laughs> And they're like, okay, well, you're the catcher full time, except for the days that Maldonado catches, and then you go to DH. I'd be cool. I mean, you that's get a more good... bang for your buck that way. Yeah. I mean, that's a good one to to do. And then you, even the days that you need a DH, you can throw Julian as a DH right after that. Word. Ooh, yeah. that's a nasty lineup on offense. I, and it's, man, it's just I want to give a youngster its dues, but it's also like a catcher is so important from the defensive aspect of what Maldi was doing to Word. what your pitchers. I mean, Verlander, 
okay, say Verlander comes back or he doesn't, but Framber, like, I need to be able to trust you, even if not that you're going to be able to catch a ball from Lance when it's in the damn dirt 50,000 times. I don't think uh, the rest of them dudes besides Verlander gave a shit, though. I really don't. Yeah, like I don't think they did either. Christian yeah. or my love. Would you be mad if we get Christian Vasquez back as our? Nope, I, I'd like to have him back. Vasquez but also, would, I also would like to let him leave because that's what we did with uh, what's the fool who was the catcher on our first one, McCann. Yeah. So Maldonado has one more year, four million. He'll stay here. Yeah, he should be a bench coach. Where the fuck is he gonna go? That's what I was saying. Like I would want to have him start one more year and then be like a mentor coach type thing. No, I want you to be a bench coach under Espada, and then when we fire him, you be the coach. Ooh, damn! He gonna he gonna teach some guys how to fight and shit. And you'll be like, hey, you see somebody go over there? Culture. You go over there, you fight then. His English will get better by then. <laughs> He's still going to have that accent. <laughs> God. Oh, man. I've seen, that, I've seen that interview with him, and I did not expect his voice to sound like that. I don't know what it sounds like. <clears throat> he sound like these. That's racist. Kid. No, that's exactly how it sounds. Nice. That's like half the team, though. Half of them need a translator, but... Oh, that's just... why they got Bregman. No, I mean, like, a real translator. Like, not the... Who is it? Luis Spanish. Garcia speaks English, but Frommer don't. Yeah. Like, they don't even... Some of them don't even speak, like... I mean, they're from all over the place, so their accents be all over the place. Like, it's funny, because, like, when uh, Julia Morales would be in there the thing uh, she'd be talking to them and you just hear like kind of them talking no english just straight spanish with each other like and then hector nearest came in and it was just like oh shoot you are just even growing even more now and i, I like it though it's uh you see like like we we always say we don't get the japanese players we're not gonna get these other type of players we're going for what we know want one? huh would you <laughs> want one? i mean the new guy coming in i'll probably take him but <laughs> nah, fuck that. We're gonna get Otani. Shit, I'll take that dude. Otani and Judge. Oh no, nah, nigga, now you're cheating on MLB the show. <laughs> nah, I was gonna say now I'm making a now I'm making a fucking illegal lineup on MLB. What was his name? <sighs> Mata Mazataka Yoshida. Maruchan Outfielder in Japan. Outfielder? Outfielder, yeah. Like Ichiro. He wants to play for the Philly support. Bro, look, there's people commenting on our Facebook post about Yuli right now. Somebody said, Yuli deserves to play. He has earned his place on the team and has proven himself. He won't take a utility, though, and I don't blame him. I bet you he will. I bet he will, too. That's dumb if you don't take it. Well, you owe him money. Yeah, yeah I mean. Like, he I'm took a lot it. of cheap-ass contracts, so if you just keep giving him one-year deals for, like, 12, 14. It's like, bro, I'm giving – the thing that people need to understand is it's the culture. Yeah. The culture is what you he want. He is. Like, he's yeah. OG golden era Astro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's – I mean, he literally got suspended for doing Asian eyes on TV. And he still was like, fuck it. We don't care. And like We ain't had one on our team <laughs> since. I was like, that's probably why we're never gonna get a Japanese player, and I'm fine with it. But <laughs> it's like, to, to me so, though, it's just that's okay. like with the body over here. People, a lot of fans overvalue players, and it's like it's not saying like, oh, I don't want you, Yuli, but you have to go with time. People get older. People, I mean, you as a coach know what their condition is. You know this and that. So it's like. It's not even that. It's like, how stupid would he be to go sign a one-year deal to play first base for fucking the Twins? It's like, well, you're not doing that. You'd rather sit on our bench and pay get paid to do nothing. You know what I mean? Hang out with Altuve, hang out with the guys, chilling, eating sunflower seeds. Coleman is here. It's a long season. It's a long season. You want? 
I think Blummer said it best. He goes, it's a long season in baseball. You want to spend it with a group of guys you enjoy being with. Word. And, I mean, that's even why the Verlander thing. For You you see the way Verlander talks. And you, it's like he's like, I don't want to leave. But I have to get my money also if people – I mean, if the Dodgers are telling you they're going to throw you some ridiculous amount, hey, do you, bro? I ain't mad yeah. at you. I hope we rock you, though, but. Probably won't. I mean, somebody on our team will. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, somebody. Anything else for Astros? I don't think that, I think that's been it. it was... Yeah, that's all the speculations and stuff that's happened already, I think. That's all the bullshit we done read. Yeah. Yeah. None of it coming true. I said, well, by the time this video comes out, probably something else comes in. There's always something in baseball. When one domino falls, more start following. Yeah, I think the Aaron Judge though is the biggest domino. Once that happens, it's yeah, that's the way the pen. You remember if out, Aaron yeah. Judge signs with uh, <clears throat> the Astros, Nick? You know what it'll feel like. You remember the day you read on your TV it said Demarcus Cousins signs with the Golden State Warriors, and you're like, "Fuck, they just ruined basketball." Yeah, that's what that <laughs> would feel like. Yeah, would it be like you said earlier, like cheating on MLB the Show? Yep. Yeah, exactly it really was is. like. like... No, you don't get it. When you watch basketball, when Demarcus Cousins with the goals to everybody's like, you fucking ruined basketball forever. Yeah, it it was already like a dumb team to go up against. I mean, it wasn't even fun to watch. I mean, unless you were a Golden State fan, I guess. But luckily, it's like it's like when the fucking Patriots were winning the Super Bowl all the fucking time. But they didn't win a bunch of them back to back like that. I know that, but. Yeah, but still, it was like the whole time you were watching it, you were just like, damn, this fucking sucks. Tom Brady's just going to fucking ball out all the time. They were a legit cheat team, that Golden State team. Sorry, sons of bitches. Uh, yeah, people played with them on NBA Live, and I was mad as fuck. I was like, oh, of course. Of course you're going with Golden State, dude. You got fucking five All-Stars. Amazing. Like, Listen, I know what you're going to want to talk about next, so I'm going to go ahead and light this because – Oh, we're going that far down? All right. Um, <laughs> next up on the list, e, we'll, we'll go with the uh, we'll go with the Houston Texans. Uh, son of a bitch. Um, they I'm went to ready. Miami. I'm they went to Miami. I'm not ready. They no, got no, no. destroyed. I, I was, that's a light word, I guess. Um, they had that shit was disgusting, bro. Man, the, the the Dolphins were not playing football when we did get in the third quarter. They were the Dolphins were just like, come the fuck on. Somebody yeah. sim to the end of this bitch because they fucking that, that took, was- they took Tua out and then they took Tyreek out for most of the second half. Like that fucking backup quarterback, he was just like, Hey, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Y'all still aren't gonna catch up. It- Kyle, Kyle Allen did I mean, damn. I just see some ugly shit from Davis Mills, but <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, people were asking for it. People were in. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now you like, made two quarterbacks. Now you just basically told the whole world that it's the coaches that don't know what they're doing. It. The man, smartest like, thing they could do is be like, hey, Ike, we did this because the fans said they wanted it so bad. <laughs> and now we're Don't say it. that. Don't say that. Because if you say that, then I know you're fucking stupid. And <laughs> we got a problem. There, there was a so uh, Lovey Smith after the game yesterday was getting asked basic questions of you know what happened this and that, and he was getting pissed off with the media, and good. a lot of people said like, okay, Lovey, you were pretty much the only level-headed guy in the the whole room last year, and now that you're ahead one, you're not the level-headed guy because you're getting. He was literally telling like, oh, I'll get back to you. We're not gonna answer that right now. I don't want. We're gonna go to this guy and like getting mad, and it's just like, dude, of course they have questions. You went to a new QB and you look even worse than you did. Uh I think we had like three mm-hmm. yards in the first half. Uh yeah, we got questions, motherfucker. What are you doing? Yeah, what are we doing? It's so predictable. It's like uh fucking Bill O'Brien all over again. You ran uh, like a halfback draw right down the A gap five plays like in a row. Or f- and then you didn't get shit. If you yeah. went three and out for doing that three times, don't do it two more times. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I have a. I saw a thing that says, Houston, we have a problem. It says, since 2017, 
You've had four general managers. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't really consider O'Brien as a manager, whatever. Yeah. Um, you yeah. better. You traded Hopkins. <laughs> yeah, but I'm over that shit already. But he was the GM. They did it. Yeah, but I don't. And I don't he really drafted care. like he had like three bad drafts in a row. Yeah, because he fucking sucks. I try to forget about that. Um, Rick Smith, we got stuck with him forever. Um, Gain, and then now we have Casario. You had four head coaches and Bill O'Brien, ugh, uh, Cornell, Cully, and Smith. And then your key <laughs> players that you've lost, they said, of course, was Hopkins, J.J. Watt, and Watson. Um. I only feel like we lost Hopkins. The other two, I don't give a fuck about. For me, and that's what I was going to say. For me, Watt does not – I don't think Watt is uh, important. I mean, Watt, thank you for everything you did here. Cool, bro. But you're not – you weren't like, oh, superstar, like Aaron Donald, Watt. Like Not at that point. Before he was. Well, yeah, before. But now I'm like, what are you doing in Arizona, bro? Like one sack, bro? Like I was going to say, he got a sack the other day, and that was it. They were I mean, they were trying to talk him up so fucking high on that but I mean, in the game on the other a day. Technical basis, he's still pretty good. Like he's gonna yeah, control yeah. his gaps and all. They that. They were talking so, him up. I mean, they were like, they were like, oh, he has the most sacks as a single uh, player this season. And I was like, I don't even know if that's true. Man, I don't give a fuck about JJ Watt. I give a fuck about our dumbass coach and if he's gonna have a job here next year. I don't. Think so do you fire Lovey and then hire everything else new? Like everything, or do you keep Lovey and give him a new coordinator? I saw a thing today, and it said exactly what you've been saying. It said, is it time to clean house and get rid of Lovey, even though it would be very problematic? But I don't feel like it would be problematic. Like, I have a lot of black homies, a lot of black homies. And I ask all of them, yo, is there any racial undertone to that? And they're none of them are like, no, because he can't coach your fucking team. And they're not even Texans fans. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if they could, as a f- football fan, they can look at that objectively and be like, no, you're firing him because he really sucks. It'd be different if he was, like, on the hinge of, right. like, like, a five and whatever team or whatever, and you're just like, all right, I'm done with him. Like, no, this team is all around bad. Like, you have people on TV talking about, like, your coaching is just bad. He's getting mad at media now. Like, bro, you're not being professional. Like, if anybody should go off on media, it's Russell Wilson for how atrocious he's been all season. Oof. But the thing is, he's not living up to the expectation of what a coach is. I mean, you look at the Rockets, we'll get into them later. They, Steven Silas has been on a, a two years of bad, and he doesn't go out there and yell at mm-hmm. the damn media and this and that. It's You're bad, bro. Yeah, he's bad. And do it. It's because he's too reactionary to everything. He does. It's like Derek Stingley gets a rap like Sauce is better than him. It's like, yeah, Sauce does look better, and he does have more picks, but he's also on a team that lets him play how he plays. Like yeah. He wants to play man. He wants to bump. And Lovey got Stingley, who's the same way as Sauce, playing zone. It's like, bro, we fucking played the Giants, and you ran zone. That's like the worst running back room in fucking football, and you're playing zone. But then we go play Kansas – I mean, Washington – and you want to play man against them? Like, what the fuck are you doing? He's stupid. Yeah, I don't I don't get what he's – their schemes. I think the only one you bring back is your um, your special teams. Yeah, Frank Ross. Yeah, because your your special teams is arguably one of the best in football right now. But, we use him a lot. We got the best punter in football. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he definitely getting his paycheck. Right? God damn it. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kick. I mean – other than that, I think it's so to the point where I think if you get a new quarterback, so we're we're more than likely getting the first pick. It looks like that. We'll see what happens with Cleveland if we get a top ten pick or we get something in twelve, or something like that. But for sure, you're probably getting the number one pick. You're going more than likely quarterback. Everybody's eyes. I think it's like a hundred and something days until the draft. So if you get a new quarterback, do you give him Lovey or do you just? Like I can't. Pick? You can't develop talent. Look at Kenyon Green. He played yeah. so bad in the game the other day, you took him out. Like, that's yeah. how bad he was. So yeah, that's true. You're, you're not developing talent, in my opinion. So yeah. something has to change. Yeah, I need, a, I need to see who gets fired. Come on, Pittsburgh. Come on, Pittsburgh. 
Um, I think there's a strong possibility mm-hmm. that D'Amico Ryans could be back as a Texans coach, as the head coach. Interesting. Not necessarily saying that's who I want, but yeah. I think there's a possibility. Exactly. You heard it here first. By you said, what Zach wants D'Amico <laughs> Ryans as his head I'd say coach. what, our defense will be fucking good. And yeah. you know how much I like defensive football. They need a – if they go defensive coach, they need a good offensive coordinator. I mean – well, that's the thing is you got to get somebody who knows their shit. You know what yeah. I mean? That's why I'm them. more towards leaning towards getting an offensive head coach. And then getting a defensive coordinator. of Yeah, like find somebody to do that. Because, I mean, if you're really trying to use the players that we've drafted to their potential, you're going to play a lot of man anyway. So you just really got to focus on getting a better pass rush. Stop the run. Our I mean, secondary is good. There's some offensive coordinators. I know the Vikings offensive coordinator has been in – in the rumbles of stuff. Um the one name that I heard the mm-hmm. offensive coordinator, and ever since I heard it, I can't get it out of my fucking head. Uh-oh. Is Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator for the Giants. He He's good. was the he was the quarterback's coach and the passing coordinator for the Chiefs up until this year. He goes over there, their offense looks better. He can call plays. I mean, Daniel. Daniel looks not like not bad for who he is. I just think Lovey don't give a shit. I don't Brian Dayball look. threw his headset on the fucking field the other day. Like he threw it on the field. And uh I forgot his name. The coach for Philly looks like he snorted meth three days in a row before the game. Because he always looks that way, but he's super turned the fuck up. And Lovey yeah. just stands there. No, just, give me somebody down here who makes the players think they give a fuck. I seen something the other day whenever uh it was right after we turned the ball over again at one point. Lovey was like sitting on the f- like on the field and he was just like Exactly. He didn't give a fuck, yeah. And then on one of them we got a pick or a fumble or something, we got the ball back. And uh right after that happened, Lovey was on the field and he was just like I'm not saying he don't give a fuck about the players. I'm saying when the as a fan, when we look at it, it don't look like you're all that interested. Yeah, and that's the problem. I mean, if you're if your coach isn't interested, how the hell you want me to be interested? I mean, Hughes literally ran over there, kicked the whole container of Gatorade. Yeah, and then I don't blame him. Was mad. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame him either. That what we're, I don't mind like the Rockets when they lose. I don't like losing, but I can. Okay, you gave me everything you have. Mm-hmm. I literally feel like none of those players showed up in Miami this Sunday. Yeah. Like there was maybe it started like, with the offensive line. They were so yeah. fucking bad. And and that's the thing. I mean, I always read people. They're like, oh, we, it's, we need a new owner. We get a new owner. We're good. We get a new owner. We're going to be good. What the fuck does that? Does the owner play on the O-line or what the fuck? The, no, what the Houston coach. Texans need <clears throat> is a face. We have no face. Like wh- who's your best player? Brandy Cooks. You legitimately have to draft a quarterback with the first pick just so you'll have a face. And that was the only way you can continue to have buzz around your team. Yeah, because running backs are hard to put a face on unless they're the offense is doing it. It's really but. fucked up, but last year the thing that kept us having a face at all was that Deshaun Watson was still on the team while he was having all this bullshit. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of him, Deshaun yeah. strolls into town. There's Come a on, lot of sister. Uh, there's a lot of fanboys in these groups. They're like, oh, my God, he's back. And I've seen so many guys, like, I mean, it's been a ton a ton of dudes, like, I've yeah. seen it, that are like, oh, I'm so totally rooting for him, but I'm still a Texans fan. I'm like, that doesn't right. make any sense at uh, all. Like, listen, I know I probably shouldn't say this. I'm a sports <laughs> fan, and I, I go by the rules, and I never want to see anybody get hurt. If I'm a Houston Texan, the very first time that Deshaun Watson drops back to throw a pass, I'm going to knock your fucking head off. Yeah. Clean, dirty, late. I'm putting my helmet on your chin strap for the – it'll flip this team around if you fucking pop Deshaun in the mouth one time. Yeah. The city – the people that are actually Texans fans, nobody wants to see him. Not because of – leaving all the alligator, all that shit out there. You gave up on your fucking team, dog. Word. You gave up on your team, you gave up on the city, and then you wanted us to be like, oh, it's okay, man. I would have yep. given up to you. No, fuck off, dude. Like, you oh, because you talked to JJ, because you talked to Andre. Andre Johnson's been in the building a shit ton of times this year. Yep. I, I like, really believe it. He he got that big-ass contract, 
all them people he fucked around with found out about it and then somebody was like they're gonna snitch and he was like oh fuck i gotta get the fuck out of dodge and he was running from the problem not for the team we were just a bystander but it is what it is i'm gonna take your fucking head off on sunday if i was on the field so i would like to see blake cashman or somebody go knock the shit out of him would you take a cleveland win and a dallas cowboys loss Yeah, I think I think y'all right. That Cleveland win means more to me. Yeah, I think I think at this point, like I'm, I'll take the Cleveland, the Cleveland win over the Cowboys loss. Like, like if we're being completely honest, like Dallas should beat us. Oh yeah, yeah, ton. Because I mean, they're They're not. Yeah, they're fucking retarded and all that, but they have decent players, so they should beat us. My whole thing is, I want Deshaun Watson to just like be freaked out the whole time and not know what to do. I want him to forget how to play football when he's playing us because he's so freaked out. He might. I mean, let's not forget the 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 Sean that we've seen a few times where he makes these bad passes and he forces Fumbles the he, ball and shit. Yeah. He hasn't really played football in he hasn't what? played football in two years. Yeah, two years. I'm going to tell you what I'll be okay with if we lose this game. We can't stop the run, and they got a Nick Chubb. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. And, yeah. I'm okay with losing to Cleveland as long as he don't have a good game. As long yeah. as Deshaun don't have a good game. I want Deshaun to have a Zach Wilson game. Yeah. There you Ouch. go. Russell Wilson. Ouch. Jeez, both Wilsons. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. We'll just change his name to Deshaun Wilson. Yeah. I want him to have a – The Wilson brothers. I want him to have a Travis Etienne game. Oof. Gosh. Get taken out in the first fucking play of the game and shit. I want him to get like throw like three interceptions and then yeah. like I wonder if they're gonna play Davis Mills again this weekend. No, nah, they said Allen starter. They said Allen is the starter until further notice. <laughs> so we you know we ain't moving a ball for shit, but yeah, hopefully our defense they need to go ahead and stop playing Damian Pierce. Just don't play him. Yeah, just, that's what they kind of said. They're gonna make boogie woogie woogie play or some shit. Dare Agumba Wale. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I said. And then, you know, I mean, and then who else needs to stop? I wouldn't, I don't give a fuck if uh, Stingley really comes. I like to see Stingley play the Cowboys, though, if he can. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like they're shutting down a lot of their talent, though. I mean, that's why I'm wondering if Stingley's really hurt. I don't think he is. I'm at, I mean, you're looking, your, your focus now is next year. Petrie. Yeah. Stingley, you get Michi back. You're gonna get a new uh, quarterback. More I think Michi's gonna. Be, I think Michi's gonna be the face of that team, like you're talking about. Nah, I mean, ain't no you, slot receiver gonna be a face of a team. If you have a, I mean, that's gonna be a nice thing though. If you have a new quarterback, a nice running back in Pierce, Michi, and then you say you even go get another receiver or something. I mean, Cooks will figure. You're out gonna draft one. Out. Well, as I'm saying, I mean, with that, that next pick from Cleveland, you can go get one. You almost just... have to pay for an O lineman too. Like you can't keep wasting <clears throat> picks on them. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I need to. I need to go steal somebody from somebody. Like, like, hey, bro, we'll buy you a Rolex. You want to come to this O line? Yeah, like, yeah, we're not that bad. Like, and you're gonna make us way better. I think. I think the Colts getting Saturday and Washington Commanders just doing their stupid Fuck mannequin it. statue that they had. I think we're pretty much <laughs> yeah, out, of the, out of the hate water for right now. Like After CJ of- Stroud lost to Michigan the other day, now it makes me wonder if we're all in on Bryce Young. <sighs> I think we are, actually. I think we are, too. <clears throat> Do y'all want a five foot ten quarterback who weighs like 190? Do you want a five foot ten quarterback? Not like, really. Does he play Call of Duty? Not to my knowledge. But he's I already know. got all the commercials up for the Heisman shit. Like, yeah, he's he's you need a face, is what you said. You need a face. Yeah, he's gonna be like it's like when Chris Paul went to the Hornets. Yeah. It it's gonna be, I mean, yeah, he's the guy that they're gonna get, especially when Heisman, you're He's going to be the number one, unless there's something you just really see that you don't like. This might be fucked up, too, but they're going to draft a black quarterback so they could get a white coach. Yeah. Who gave you something, all right? Yeah. Your whole offense is black. 
That's what they're going to say. They're going to say something crazy like that. I mean, the, that's going to be something that they would say, but it, it's no, they'll never say it. It'll just be implied. It's like, yeah, but I mean, you can like you read between the lines a bit with them, and it's like, like how it, dare like, you? How dare you insinuate that we're <laughs> racist in any way? Our quarterback is black. Yeah, and then and then the black people are gonna be like, barely you see nigga, yeah. <laughs> Cully, <laughs> Jesus. Would you be mad if you were a quarterback and you got drafted by the Texans, or would you just be like, cool, I'm in the NFL? I wouldn't be mad to be drafted by the Texans because we have decent little players. I mean, you get Pierce, Michi, Collins, maybe Cooks back. I mean, it, it could be a lot worse. You could end up where – who else needs a, a quarterback? Carolina. I mean, they got more. Atlanta. Marshall. Carolina got three quarterbacks, and they don't know who's the starter. Nope. After that, you could – Washington needs a starter. Indy needs a starter. Denver Seattle. needs a starter. Seattle needs a starter. Houston needs a starter. New Orleans needs a starter. Yeah. Everybody Detroit needs a starter. starter. Maybe we should just go try to get Jared Goff. Oh. Really? I wouldn't hate that. I wouldn't fucking hate uh, it. He'd have to remove that thing on his face. I don't care what's on his face. Put your fucking helmet on. <laughs> would you walk around the whole city with your helmet on? Got. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, that's really the only thing we can focus on, I guess. With, uh, I guess, uh, what do y'all have? Uh, I guess outlook: Texans versus Browns. Texans by. I think goal. they're gonna they're gonna feed Nick Chubb the whole game. They're not gonna ask Deshaun to throw the ball a whole bunch in his first game. They're gonna, and then we're not gonna do nothing about Nick Chubb. Hmm. So you got Cleveland by two touchdowns? Now nah, I got Houston by field goal. <laughs> and right now I got Skittles, beast mode. Ooh. What you got, Caleb? Uh, I don't know, man. Who do you got? I got I'm not saying Cleveland. I got Houston by. I don't want to say Cleveland. I want to say point conversion. I want to say Houston by, like, I, a safety. I'll say Houston by six. Deshaun's going to fumble the ball, and somebody's going to grab it and run it in. That'd be tight. Defense. That's where I'll go with. Good. I honest, there's. I have a feeling he's going to throw at least one or two picks. Or one pick and a fumble. I, I just – Just throw it at Petrie. You don't catch him. I hope yeah. he, got, yeah, true, I hope he gets right. sacked like three times. But <clears throat> Jalen Petrie knocked the shit out of Tyree Kill the other day. Yeah, he, he hit did. him like right on top of the head. And I was like, that fucking hurt. That hurt Tyree. Yeah. yeah. Caleb was mad. His boy was. After that. Tua got bent backwards, too. That boy was. Yeah. Tua was about He'd to be a terrible wrestler. He'd yeah. be a terrible he, wrestler. He would not lie. Throwing up gang signs and shit all the time. All right. Getting into, I guess, the Rockets. Eh. It's a slow season. Um, starting off still. A lot, of, a lot of basketball to go. But we're, like, on par with the rest of the sorry team. Yeah, that's that's all kind of got the same record. It's weird having one like dynasty and then two rebuild teams, but I feel out of the rebuilds, this is one of the teams I'm very confident in. Like, in all fairness to the Rockets, is like we lost a shit ton of games to start the season, but we took like two long road trips to start the season. Yeah, I mean they had us flying from Milwaukee to Utah to Houston, back to Milwaukee, back to it was Toronto, the Clippers, the Phoenix. Murphy said it. He goes, uh, Maxwell Murphy said, they go, the the shittier teams have the shittier schedules. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's destined for that. I mean, so, but you're going for Victor Wambayama. So, I any- actually think that um, we're going to do better than the teams like the Spurs <clears throat> and the. Yeah, I think we'll be. But it's lottery ball. So. I really think we could get past the fourth. Like, I don't think we'll be in the bottom four. I don't think we will either. I think we'll be like five or something. But... Yeah, we'll be stupid and be five. But yeah, but I mean, at this point, you have the talent, the young talent you're going with. So now it's just building around it and grooming it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we still, I think, need to trade Eric Gordon. 
Well, you said uh, Garrison Matthews. Um, I think you can just figure out the the figure out the direction you're going at the end of the year. I feel with them is this is a year to the chemistry and the nucleus of the the young guys is growing. You see Jabari, Kevin Porter, and Jalen Green kind of building this like I don't want to say a big three, but they're kind of building like a connection of. They know what their roles are on the team. Like, what? I mean, it's not much. I mean, until I think until it gets closer to what February trade deadline, it really doesn't. Most of the the rocket stuff for us is really just the player development. That's all the the rockets you're doing. What the Texans have been trying to do all along is just see what you got. Yeah. Go hoop and see what you got. Yeah. Well, shit. Y'all got anything else to add on that thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's it, Houston. Enjoy it. More than likely going to probably get some more free agents, hopefully. Maybe not. Who knows? We'll see. You can always follow us on our Facebook page at slg network we got all the breaking news there for houston astros houston rockets houston texans and u of h cougars now yeah word um yes cougars congrats on being number one word. big bullseye on you shout out to a lot of the texas college teams for moving in the top 25 but um if you made it to this point make sure you like subscribe check out our other videos on the bayou city boys playlist and we're out Later. Later. How much I'm working for this? I swear my dreams are too important.